never hear you, Brandon. <laughs> Are we live? Here. We're live. Okay. Welcome to our Kingsburg City Council regular meeting. Um, the council chambers are open at, to the public at 100% capacity. Tonight is Wednesday, April 6th, 2022. And tonight our invocation will be given by Pastor Nathan from the Kingsburg First Baptist Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Welcome. Lord, thank you so much, God, for Kingsburg and this community. We continue to just seek your wisdom and clarity uh, and, and pray for blessing over the leaders here, the council that's represented here today, Lord, that you would continue to give them vision so that our members, patrons, citizens of, community, of Kingsburg would just thrive, God. And so thank you that, um, Lord, we are a heart for you. We have a heart for you and that we have a heart for this community. So I ask for your blessing and favor over this meeting. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You can be seated. And I will call this meeting to order. Madam Clerk, can you please do roll call? Here. Council Here. Council Member Here. Council Member Here. 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 Thank you. Item number two we have is to approve our agenda. I'll make that motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item three is presentations, and we have none listed tonight. So we'll move on to item four. Item four is public comment. This is a time for any citizen to come forward and address the city council on any issue within its jurisdiction that is not listed on the agenda. A maximum of five minutes is allowed for each speaker. Do we have anyone from the public that would like to come forward and speak? Go ahead and come up to the microphone and state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. My name is Laura Harris and I am a resident of Kingsburg. I've been here for 20 years. I live on 832 Kern Street. I was in front of you all in September, I believe. Um, I don't know if you remember why I was here, but concerns about the safety on Kern Street. And um, I'm just really disappointed that nobody has contacted me except Vince. Um, he has called me a couple of times saying that he has talked with the council about our problems there. He's come and taken pictures. Just recently, an elderly lady fell going around the school, walking. There are lifted areas there, and I made that um, known to you guys the last time. Um, but a lot of people don't know, or they don't have the knowledge that they can come in here and voice. I was told by somebody that I need to bring people in here, and I, I really don't want to bring that side of the community in here and let it known to our community that we are being neglected on that side. I noticed that somebody told me that we're contracted out to do cement work, that they won't come in and do patchwork. Where I see all this patchwork is done in front of the school. Somebody ran over, a, you know, knocked a pole down, that area there was patched up. Somebody ran up almost in the driveway, that area was patched up. So. I find it hard to believe that that is the excuse that is being given to us. All I want, for 20 years I've been here and I've seen no, no improvement around the school, none. And I don't know what's so hard because I see all these improvements, people painting poles and you, you do do patchwork. And um, do I need to bring somebody in a wheelchair in front of you guys that have fallen and hurt themselves so you guys can see that I am telling the truth? Or do I need to bring those people in here that have fallen already? I haven't been in here lately because I had total knee replacement or I would have been here. Um, I was with my grandchildren. I rushed here and I barely made it. So my mayor hasn't called. <laughs> I was given a card by Alexander when I left. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, um, I called the police department. Chief didn't call me, F Officer Fuentes told me that we have one trailer that um, monitors the speed, but it was there one day and broke down. They just got it back. One trailer in the whole city of Kingsburg, and he said that is gonna tell him what the speed limit is 
all day long going on there. We don't have enough police. I'm told we don't have the manpower. So all I want is somebody to tell me when something is going to be done over there. Because over here on this side, beautiful pavements, beautiful sidewalks, no lifting. I'm told that it's the responsibility of the homeowners. Then I'm told it's not the responsibility of the homeowners. What is it? Because I'm getting different stories. So, Laura, I would like a call from you to tell me, because I think that you would know everything, what is going on. So next month I'm going to come in here and maybe I don't want to call Channel 30 or I don't want to, you know, have somebody call and let them know. I don't want to do that. People tell me all the time, you're so lucky to live in Kingsburg. And I don't voice, well, mm, no, because I live here. And I'm proud to live here. And I've done a lot of volunteer work here in Kingsburg. I'm, doing that. I'm asking right now for the city of Kingsburg to come and look out there, which none of you guys did. Nobody did. Vince did. Just come and sit in my front yard and see the traffic that goes through there. What's happening on Kern? There's been another accident, I hear. So I hear, I tell residents, come with me. What for? They don't care about us. And that's sad that our own residents are saying that on that side of town. During public comment, as a council, we cannot respond to what you say unless it's on the agenda. I heard that the last time I was here. But I am going to ask staff to respond to you. Okay. Okay. I so, appreciate Mr. Uh, Alex so Alexander Harris, Henderson. You've had several conversations with members of Public Works yes. as well as the, the police department. Police department never got back Ms. to me. Ms. I left a message. I did speak with Officer Fuentes. Yes, you spoke with Officer Fuentes, who's our traffic uh, enforcement officer. He called me again when I called him this week, and yes, he said yeah. the, the trailer is coming out again. It sure. just got fixed. Did it just get fixed? Did you guys know that? It just got fixed? No, I didn't hear that. Sure. So... Uh, so I know you've had several conversations with our Public Works Department. Um, uh -huh. Maybe stated to you, so we have over 50 locations in town that require cement work. We have to get quotes to do that work. Uh, so we are anticipating the work to begin on April 18th. April so, 18th. And could I have a, where it's going to start? I don't know that, but I can try and find that out for you, okay. sure. I appreciate that. Happy to do that. I, I just don't want some fatality to happen and then we're all jumping the gun to get things done when it has already been brought up to the city prior. And um, Alex, can you also let her know how you've been working with the school district? Sure. I know I know. Daniel's uh, talked to you a little bit. I think Councilmember Palomar has as well that we're working to put in um, the rapid flashing beacons there at the corner of Roosevelt and or right there on the end of Draper at the crosswalk. Right, but I think that we need one too on current and... But and I, that is a bad area. That's where all the accidents happen, right there. Or even just the light that flashes. And I ask the obstacles, the trees, our, our signs are dull. You know, you go anywhere else, any little town, and they have these neon lights, and they don't have money like we do. We have money here in Kingsburg. We have money because I see the upgrade that's happening here. It's just who picks and chooses where this happens. That's that's what I'd like to know, because going down Sierra, boy, those those lights on those stop signs, you know, I, I see a lot of upgrades, but not on our side. And that's sad. 20 years I've been there. 20 years. I'm a homeowner, and I'd like my area just as nice as everywhere else. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Vincent, thank you. Thank you. I like to. Uh, I like to second what she said. Uh, I attended one of the safety meetings. I'm Lee Darling. I'm a resident. Uh, one of his meetings, and they talked about putting a four-way stop. And in that meeting, you know, Principal Marshall, he thinks it ought to be right there in front of the school, because I can tell you, because my kids have gone to Roosevelt, uh, you know, over the years, and people, there's nothing to slow them down. They speed around that corner, and then they speed down the street. But putting a four-way stop, you know, yeah, you guys were talking about that would probably not be a good idea right there. But a stop sign right there in front of the school would slow in, and make the traffic more controlled going that way. And, um, you know, one of my guys at work, Jesse Sanchez, he got in a serious accident on that, not right there, but the, at the stop sign. A lady ran a stop sign. 
So just putting up a stop sign isn't always going to save everybody, but he's still, he's only working two days, two hours a day. And, uh, you know, he's all messed up. So I think, yeah, I think we need to spend some more money on Vince's district. <laughs> so I'm backing him up. <laughs> I like to attend one of his safety meetings because that was a really good meeting. You guys got some good, good ideas going there. Yeah, so I just thought I'd throw my two cents in. Thank you, Lee. Do we have anyone else here for public comment? Okay, seeing not, no others, we'll move on to item number five, to consent calendar. These are items that are considered routine in nature. They are placed on the consent calendar. They will be considered as one item and voted upon in one vote unless individual consideration is requested. Each vote in favor of the consent calendar is considered and recorded as a separate affirmative vote in favor of each action listed. Approval of the consent calendar items include um, recitals, reading ordinances by titles only, and adoption of recommended actions contained in staff reports. Tonight we have items 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, and 5.4. Would any anybody like it to pull any of those items? No? Then I'll need a motion. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 6.1, Revenue Collection Overview Staff Report by City Manager Alexander Henderson. And... Um, presentation by city manager Alexander Henderson uh, good evening mayor north members of council uh, so we are in the middle of our uh, budget preparation process and so as part of that we start to talk uh, with a look at a little bit of both of uh, um, our revenues and our our expenditures but tonight I'm going to talk about a few things uh, kind of back to back the first one is our is our major um, Revenues, uh, specifically those impacting uh, the general fund, except for <coughs> also talk about Measure E, which is our our pub our one percent public safety tax. Uh, so the first one here uh, is a snapshot of uh, what what's called the Bradley Burn sales tax. So this is uh, the one percent or a portion of the one percent that we receive. Uh, this does not uh, in include um, the full one percent of our online sales, which you'll, which we do get for our measure E, and I know we've talked about that before, so that's kind of the difference, and you'll see in some of those collections. So I've, sh I've shown a little bit of a, a, a snapshot here of the last four years, uh, by, uh, by quarter. Um, so for the current fiscal year that we, that we're in, we've uh, received uh, two full quarters and just received our first apportionment, um, which reflects uh, January of 2022. Um, and we get. Uh, the, you know, when you spend money at a store, uh, the store collects sales tax. Uh, that all gets uh, sent uh, to the state, and then the state verifies it, and then eventually sends it to us. So we're uh, usually about uh, uh, about uh, two months behind. So I would imagine we'll get uh, February uh, at the end of this month. So you can kind of see, uh, obviously, uh, 19 in uh, fiscal years uh, 20, 1920, and then 2021, uh, a little bit skewed because of the pandemic. Uh, we weren't entirely sure uh, what those... Uh, uh, what those years would look like, and uh, we budgeted appropriately during that time. So you can see, uh, just these are the totals here uh, at the bottom. Um, and you know, thankfully for um, the first uh, six six months or so, we're we're trending uh, uh, a little bit higher than we have. Uh, just you know, if you look at the first quarter, uh, see a little bit higher in 21, 22. Uh, same for uh, uh, second quarter total. So um, basically trending. Uh, in line with what we budgeted or at least a little bit higher so those are obviously uh, positive signs as we uh, look to close out this year and start to discuss uh, what uh, the upcoming year will look like uh, the next one uh, which is obviously the larger one is our uh, public safety sales tax our measure e tax uh, this one has grown um, every single quarter uh, and every single year uh, this one was actually um, you know, we, we've talked about this previously, but it was actually buoyed a little bit during the pandemic because a lot of people were doing more shopping online. And this one, we do get the full 1% of that. So uh, if you uh, if you just doubled um, uh, these two months, you'd be uh, pretty close to about uh, two and a half million. So 2.5 is right around where we're projecting for the end of this fiscal year. 
Um, and so uh, that's uh, something that uh, we're seeing as well from our forecast from our, our third party sales consultant. So um, those are the positive figures as well. Expect that that growth will eventually start to level off here soon and probably be around that range a little bit more um, uh, in the years to come. Uh, other major sources, uh, general fund uh, sources that we have, uh, property tax uh, relatively consistent. Uh, you can see uh, from year to year, uh, it's possible this may uh, go up a little bit. Um, it somewhat is dependent upon um, the amount of home sales. So if there's been a lot of home sales and then revaluation of those properties, then uh, we'll get to higher property tax collection um, uh, throughout the year. Uh, our vehicle license fees uh, that we receive, so this is uh, a portion of uh, every vehicle that's registered in, in Kingsburg, uh, the city gets a portion of that. So um, people buy new cars, uh, pay higher fees, uh, a higher portion comes back to us. Uh, TOT is our transient occupancy tax, so that's a 12% tax that we have on our, on our hotels. Um, so again, we saw some uh, disruption in uh, 1920 and uh, 2021. Uh, uh, but the first uh, couple quarters have been uh, higher. So th this is a projected number, but we are expecting it to be uh, higher than it has been the last few years. And then our permits and fees uh, definitely vary. It's just dependent upon the amount of development that we have, both commercial and residential. Um, so a lot of these figures, while these numbers are larger, as we talked about in the past, a lot of the fees that we collect are for, um, a lot of them go towards our plan check, so we have to we pay a company for plan checking, the, our, the engineering that goes into it, and then inspections, right? So um, all of the fees that we have, so just looking at a subdivision every single day, there's inspectors out there um, every day um, from from the city, um, both from the engineering side, the, the off-site work, the, the, the civil improvements, as well as uh, the homes themselves. So um, I also run those through site plan review, and. Uh, do a lot of that work up front, so a lot of those, uh, a lot of those revenues are um, covering those costs that we have uh, related to the to that development. So, um, it's a quick overview of, of kind of the major revenues, but uh, summary is is that uh, thankfully they're trending uh, a little bit higher than we originally anticipated. Uh, if you recall, the last couple of years, obviously we've we've budgeted conservatively, not really sure what would happen. Um, with regards to the pandemic, uh, especially with, with the more volatile things like sales tax, one thing I will say, um, you know, I posted, uh, we posted about this and we put it uh, in the Kingsburg Carrier. So it's frustrating for all of us to uh, have to pay higher uh, gas, uh, but the higher the gas um, amount is, the more, the more taxes that, that we actually recoup from there because it's a, it's a percentage. So um, not good for every one of us, but just some, um, some yeah, that gives you a little insight on how that might impact our sales taxes, uh, you know, especially if, if prices remain high over the next uh, uh, several months. So it's something to take into consideration as well. And uh, gas station uh, services, I think, is uh, one of our, I think it's in our top three of our uh, highest uh, you know, sales tax categories, just all of the service stations that we have in town. So that concludes my report, but I'm definitely happy to answer any questions that you might have. Any council discussion? So, um, yeah, so for, it's a little complicated, but uh, there's, there's kind of two versions. So if I was talking a little bit about what we call the Bradley Burns sales tax. So that portion, we don't get the whole amount. So what happens is, is that, um, Amazon, you pay taxes on it. In Fresno County, it goes into what they call a county pool. So there's Fresno County gets a, a pool of those funds, mm -hmm. and then it's redistributed by population. So we don't get the full amount in Kingsburg for that portion. It's just the way that the state's sales tax formula works. The 1% add-on tax, the district tax, which is our measure E, we get that full 1%. So when you do buy something, you're paying a portion of sales tax, just like if you bought something in town, you're paying a portion for that goes into the county pool, and then that 1%, that full 1% comes back to King. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why, that's why I was saying, if it, you know, total collection for Bradley Burns is about 1.2 million, and, and for Measure E, it's 2.3. So that's one of the reasons. The other reason is that this captures more sales tax than um, that Bradley Burns does. So for example, if you go, 
Uh, at the Selma or you know, anywhere besides Kingsbridge, we don't have any car dealerships, but you buy a car, you're paying sales tax on that car. Um, the municipality for which you're buying it from is getting a portion of it, but you're also, because we live in Kingsburg, you're paying 1% on that, and that 1% comes back um, for measuring. So whether you buy it in Clovis or Bakersfield or wherever you're registering it in Kingsburg, uh, that 1%. So that's why the measuring number is, they're, they're supposed to be the same 1%, but they they don't collect the same from the same sources, and that's why measuring is a little bit higher. Any other public comment? No? Okay, I'll bring it back to council. Be the measuring, was that a 10-year tax, Alex? Yes, it has mm -hmm. a 10-year sunset. So it was passed in 2018, and so, yeah, um, I would have to come back again. I would have to go back to the voters. Well, council would have to reauthorize it again and then go back to the voters if it were to be renewed. So. Thank you. Any other council discussion? Positive news, that's good, right, yeah. for the time being. That was information only, mm -hmm. so no action necessary. We'll move on to 6.2, CalPERS update 2022 presentation by City Manager Alexander Henderson. Uh, Mayor North and members of council, thank you. Um, so again, every year about this time we have a conversation, you know, one of our, our largest um, uh, liabilities is, is our is our, our pension um, contributions, and so I'm going to give a little bit of an update here about the CalPERS, the the, fund, the entire fund itself, and then obviously um, you know, the impact on on Kingsburg locally. So um, you can see here just pension funding. This is just an example of uh, basically where every dollar goes. Um, so of every dollar, you can see this breakdown here. Um, 30, 32 cents of every dollar comes from employers. So uh, City of Kingsburg would pay 32 cents, 13 uh, cents would come from uh, employees paying in, and then the vast majority, uh, you know, 55% uh, percent of every dollar is coming from investment earnings. So you'll see here in a couple of slides how that uh, those investment earnings uh, really impact uh, the fund uh, from year to year. And so these are all the things that go into uh, what determine our contribution requirements uh, every single year. Um, so some of the things that have changed uh, obviously, over the last 20, 25 years, or some of the, um, they've, they've changed some of the actuarial assumptions on how long uh, people are living, so how long those benefits have to be paid out for. Uh, the actual benefits themselves have been changed at different times, uh, which has then obviously impacted uh, the amount of payout that occurs over time. Uh, this is a, uh, an actual document. From, it's, a little, it's a little tough to read when I blow up. I apologize for that, but it's actually from, uh, um, from PERS. Uh, so the actual, the, the city, uh, the city data that we have, the most recent is from uh, June 30th of 2020. Uh, PERS comes out with those in July or August every single year, so uh, the 2021 data will be available to us in a few months. But they do have um, hot, you know, overall fund uh, figures, and that's what they're showing here. So um, you could see that when I was here uh, a year or so ago, uh, the fund value uh, was below uh, 400 billion total, uh, but in fiscal year 21, CalPERS had a return of 21.3%, and so the fund grew uh, by over uh, uh, $80 billion. So uh, a significant year in 2021, you can you can see what, uh, what the, the total fund market value has been, uh, again, from 88 up until uh, 2021. Um, some of the things that have, but, uh, w that have impacted uh, employers and employees for that is that the discount rate, which is the assumed uh, return on investment, uh, has gone from 7% down to 6.8%. Some of that was triggered, uh, CalPan, Cal, uh, CalPERS has some automatic tr uh, triggers that uh, go into place and um, this past year because of such high returns, uh, those, uh, uh, those were automatically triggered. So you can see here a year ago, uh, the total uh, public employee uh, fund was at about 70% uh, funded, and in one year it jumped to uh, 82%. They're showing 80% here as well uh, because uh, of that discount rate. Um, at 7% seven, at 7 it would be at 82% funded, at 6.8% it's uh, at about 80% funded. So uh, a good thing still, but you can see uh, the difference uh, that one year will make. And then obviously uh, the first part of this year uh, just from um, – you know, market standpoint has, has been, you know, not uh, performing as well um, uh, as as last year and the year prior. So we'll see uh, we'll see how that uh, impacts it. And so uh, you can then here see how that dollar uh, breakdown changes. 
uh, based upon um, uh, their return on investment. So now that 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 dollar shifts. So instead of 55% in interest earnings, it's now 60%, uh, and there's some reduction then both on the uh, employer and the employee side. So you can um, get a sense of what that looks like. Um, so just an example of you know how we got to this point, which we've talked about before. So uh, again, the the recession uh, saw Calpers lose about 25% of their assets uh, in in the late uh, uh, 2008, 2009, 2010. Um, you can see here that they needed an extra 600 million from state taxpayers uh, during that time. Uh, they lowered the discount rate to 7% uh, in December of 2016. Uh, and then fiscal year 21, because of that return on investment, uh, the discount rate was reduced to 6.8%. They did add $85 billion in value, and uh, the funded status jumped about 10%, which we talked about. So again, all those things kind of contribute to uh, you know, where the fund overall is at uh, today. Uh, breaking it down here low, uh, for city, we have um, six plans. So three of those are classic, so before PEPRA. And then obviously after uh, PEPRA, so miscellaneous employees are public works, uh, city hall employees, uh, and then you have uh, police and fire falling into their uh, respective categories. And there's just a little information about obviously about the, the pension reform that occurred uh, in 2012 and went into effect in 2013. Um, some some um, maximums that were put into place, some uh, different rules that pr to prevent pension spiking and things like that. Um, uh, so now, uh, from an employer standpoint, uh, there's two things that make up uh, the city's contribution uh, every single year. So one of them we call a normal cost. That's a percentage of payroll. So it's a percentage amount of the people that we have working here right now. And then our unfunded uh, actuarial liability um, is how much we owe uh, based upon uh, assumptions that CalPERS is making uh, in the long term about you know uh, paying out retirees in the future. It involves uh, people that we've had work for the city previously. And then that makes our up our entire uh, contribution. Uh, so some of these slides uh, are a little bit dated, but I think they're helpful uh, as we look back just to see some of the work that we've done. So uh, in 2018, we we brought in a third party for, uh, firm to to um, do a study on on our outstanding liabilities to give us a sense of what it will look like uh, over the next uh, several years. So we had about seven million dollars of unfunded liability at that time. And then I think this is an important chart because. If you look at this uh, this red line here, this kind of shows at that time um, what our unfunded liability would have been, uh, basically with no intervention at that point, right? So um, I'll go to the next one, and you, you'll, I'll, I'll kind of shift back and forth, but you'll give your uh, kind of give ourselves an idea of of what some of the activity that the council has made has had an impact on our on our uh, payments each year. So uh, right now we're in uh, fiscal year uh, 22, and so our, our lump sum payment across all uh, of our plans, uh, a little over $675,000 uh, uh, just in the, in the UAL. So if you went up uh, to fiscal year 22, uh, the original estimate was that we would be at about $731,000, so uh, our amount is lower. Um, and then next year, uh, we're actually going to realize a reduction of close to 5%. And the reason for that is, is because of the additional discretionary payments that the council has made over time. So I put this one out here so that you could see what it would look like uh, if we had not done uh, some of our ADPs in the short term. So uh, instead of being at uh, $643,000, it would be um, you know, about $70,000 uh, 70, more. Um, at $714,000 next year. Um, so you can see in fiscal year 23, originally they were anticipating we would be paying about $745,000 uh, at this juncture in UAL, and so we're, we're actually close to about $100,000 less there. And so that's, that's great. I mean, obviously we, we made some, you know, the council made some significant uh, investments in our, uh, uh, in our ADPs, um, and so I'll, I'll jump into that now. Um, you know. We set the, we created uh, a policy that basically takes a, a vast majority of any surplus funds we have and puts it into a, a, a pension, uh, a, an un, a unfunded accrued liability fund, as well as uh, two other funds as well to um, utilize that surpl surplus funding when we have it. We've also um, you know made sure that employees are paying uh, their fair share, so every one of the employee groups is paying uh, the same amount, about 40% of their normal contribution. 
And then, as I was talking about, we've made uh, two uh, significant ADPs, right? So we've made about $1.6 million, uh, both in uh, 2019 and 2021, both of those coming from that specific fund, uh, from surplus dollars, not, not coming um, you know, from, from regular operations. We don't have to cut any programs or anything like that. And we'll have an, uh, a, about a $1.8 million long-term savings. Uh, but we're already seeing, obviously, some of those short-term savings because of those ADPs, too. And part of that is because CalPERS had a 21.3% uh, return. But we had uh, you know, uh, made an additional payment of uh, $850,000 in 2019. So we were able to take advantage um, you know, of, of you know, I guess, sort of time in the market. It's not what we're trying to do. We're playing, we're playing the long game. Our, our, our savings will be in interest. Uh, savings uh, for those for the long term, but it is helping us in the short term as well. So that's uh, good to see. So for us uh, right now, we will await those uh, 2021 actuarial documents. Um, uh, I'm hopeful that they will take into consideration. Well, the 2021 ones won't won't take into consideration the last ADP we made because that was made in December of uh, of 21. So it'll be as part of the actuarial report next year. Um, but they will give us an idea then of, of future years as well. Um, and then it's just a matter of obviously, you know, continuing to monitor their returns and any assumption changes or, or discount rate changes that they make. There was, and I know we talked about a few months ago, there was uh, a lot of conversation at CalPERS about whether they were going to change that rate from 70% to one of the options was 6.2, one was 6.5, and ultimately they, they did settle on 6.8. So. You know, the lower those uh, the assumption of that rate of return is, the higher the contribution to the city uh, will have to be in each year. So, um, you know, six point eight was uh, hopefully a good compromise and hopefully realistic in in terms of of, of the investment return that they get because you don't want to. I mean, they could assume ten percent, but if the reality is five percent, then that doesn't help either. So, that concludes my report. But I'm definitely happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. We'll start with council um, discussion, and then we'll move to public input. Any council discussion on this item? It's, it's really important. I, I know it's not the funnest thing to sit here and listen to with all the numbers, but this is such a huge liability. So I just kind of want to compliment Alex a little bit on just making those additional discretionary payment recommendations. Um, that's you know that 1.6 that we've put in has saved is going to save us 1.8 million dollars. That's it's not common for cities to do that. So the fact that we're in a good financial position and that you pay attention to it, this is a constant moving target too. So thanks for doing that. This is a <clears throat> this is capable of breaking cities realistically. Mm -hmm. yeah, it has. Yes. Yeah. Any other council discussion? Well, I'll open up to the public. Any public input question? No? Okay. <laughs> and this was also information only. Yep. So we will move on to item 6.3, our 2021-22 capital improvement plan update, presentation and staff report by our city manager, Alexander Henderson. Yes, Madam Mayor, members of council. Uh, again, just, just kind of an update on progress of uh, some of our, our, our capital improvement items. Uh, I won't go through uh, all of these, but uh, please feel free to answer questions. I, I will highlight them. Uh, the vast majority of them are, are in progress, um, you know, likely to be completed um, either shortly or uh, certainly by year end. Uh, one of the ones we're working on uh, right now, all the departments are involved in our digital records management um, program. So that's, a, that's our laser, laser fiche program, uh, you know, trying to move away from um, uh, paper and, and get everything uh, in the cloud. And so we don't have any issues with uh, long-term retention. Uh, we're in the process, uh, obviously we've done some of the, the city hall flooring right now, and then we're in the process of doing that uh, community development department right now, which is uh, uh, under construction. Uh, the carpet for that will is scheduled to begin next week. Um, uh, we did, uh, Council, I think last meeting or two meetings ago, did award um, uh, the contract for uh, the consultant to update our emergency operations plan. Um, so uh, we, we put that out to RFP um, and select a consultant, and now uh, they'll, they'll begin work on that. So uh, that was last done in, in 2010, so uh, we're ready for, for that update as well. 
Um, some of the, you know, not necessarily capital projects, but some of the programs that, that we in include in here. Uh, we've had uh, six uh, facade uh, matching uh, applications that we've uh, approved this year. So some of those are uh, in progress right now as we speak. Um, uh, micro grant program, you actually have an application on your agenda this evening. Um, uh, we are working on uh, some ex the extension of the uh, trail uh, on, on Matson Avenue, so that's out to bid right now. We expect those bids to come back um, uh, this month, and then uh, that work will take place in May and June. Um, we completed the work on Madsen. Uh, the roundabout at Sierra and Bethel is also out for bid right now, um, also set to come back uh, for the end of June. Uh, there are a couple of uh, road projects that are occurring uh, that will occur uh, probably most likely in May. So uh, 7th Avenue uh, from Mailer to Roosevelt uh, will be done this year. Um, and Nevada uh, was also the council's uh, SB1 project, so that will be done this year. Um, I think both of those are in District 5. And uh, one of them, and then uh, Ventura. Uh, is also a project from 10 to 18 that will be uh, done. Um, is Kern Street on here? Kern is, is not in a position to be redone. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's, Isn't it's that good the shape. street we were just talking about, the sidewalk? But the sidewalk is in, that's in the 50 that's okay. up for bid right now, so that project will get done in the next, uh, in the next few weeks. Um, um, let's see what else. A uh, handful of uh, projects just from the police and fire department, um, you know, new, new um, personal uh, protective equipment, um, ordering of new vehicles uh, that we generally have every year uh, in the police department, new patrol vehicles. Um, some upgrades at the pool, uh, we share those uh, in our JPA with the high school. and. Uh, we're obviously in the, in the middle of our uh, the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund study, and and then we're working on a, a couple of other um, planning documents as well. So we have to up, we update our water model, uh, and that helps us determine where we need uh, improvements uh, in the water fund uh, to our to our water system, so that we make sure that we're uh, staying to on top of those. Um, uh, Capital projects before they become uh, catastrophic and we have issues with the with the with our water system. Uh, we're also working on um, our improvement standards. So we've talked about that a few times. So those are the things that we would require of new development, whether it be subdivisions or things like that. So would, you know, those are things like uh, you know making sure that they have the proper conduit in the ground, uh, that they you know that there are certain policies and standards that just become. Um, they're not negotiable, right? They're approved by the council, and then the developer knows that those are the things that they have to develop. So, uh, also in the, um, working on that too. So that's uh, Dave Peters' office, and then um, obviously Holly with the um, community development department are all kind of working through draft items, and then we'll bring that to council for for your guys's input and modification, and then eventually, hopefully, uh, approval uh, in the next few months. So, if there are individual questions, please let me know. But. Start report. with council discussion. Any questions? I'm happy to see a lot of, um, with, I guess you would call it an orange color, a lot of in progress. That's really nice to see. Of course, the green is good. Yeah. Because they're completed. But there's not any of that, not, like there's hardly any not colored yet. So at least we're in the process of getting something done with a lot of these capital improvement projects. So I'm mm -hmm. pleased for the update. Sure. I appreciate just bringing this back to us so we can look at CAP where we're at so we're looking at it constantly and that way it's not just a stagnant sitting on a shelf someplace that we are using and looking at it so thanks for that any other council discussion any public input well I don't Yeah, so that's more maintenance, more maintenance related. This is more capital projects that are you know, kind of one time, but we, we have to do striping every year, and so that's just part of a maintenance budget. I think that's that's his plan is to do it. It's a, it's a short window when school is out and school comes back in. But yeah, that's 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 their plan. Yeah, yeah, that's, I'm getting that's their plan. Right now. Yeah. I'm waiting. 
Just a reminder that when we do have public input, you do need to come up to the microphone. This is on Facebook Live. We need to make sure that we can hear you. So if you can state your name and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Good evening. Sherman Dix. I am a resident of Kingsburg. <laughs> uh, no, I just I want to reiterate what Jewel was saying about, I mean, it's this is a very ambitious list project list here, and uh, it's good to see uh, the progress that's being made. I just want to point out, and I would continue to encourage, and I think uh, the, the council is very supportive of it, but the downtown uh, grants, uh, specifically the facade, I mean, the downtown looks great. There's a lot of activity going on. It's getting so busy. Uh, so that's good to see. The other thing I would say, just the interest rate environment. I'm sure you've been discussing that, but uh, you know, I can anticipate that in a year or so we may see interest rates twice where they're at. So uh, I'm not necessarily someone that wants to leverage things, but the time, you know, the, the, the interest rate environment may be one that we don't see for a long time as far as rates. So if there are. Uh, some wishes like that, I would say that's a good time, good time to do it. But yeah, it's great, great to see the progress, and uh, uh, I think uh, you can see it throughout town. So, thank you. Any other council discussion? <laughs> this was also informational, no action necessary. Next item. 6.4 micro grant application consideration and um, KGSL staff report and presentation by city manager Alexander Henderson. Well, I'm up here. <laughs> well, let's just keep it going. Uh, so, if, if the council will recall, in, in 2017, uh, you cr created uh, a program that would partner the city with uh, private residents, groups, or service clubs uh, to help finance projects that uh, may not otherwise happen. Uh, and there were some specific reasons for that program and the guidelines uh, with uh, beautifying a public space or a park, support of community programs or group activities, safety benefit, uh, the overall quality of life, uh, or su um, promoting a sustainable economic uh, development. And a lot of those tie into um, you know, our, strategi our strategic goals as well uh, for the city. Um, so this evening, uh, you're considering an application uh, from the Kingsburg uh, Girls Softball League, uh, which is proposing to utilize funds uh, to revamp uh, the former Mosquito Abatement uh, District building, which was deeded back to the city um, uh, last year, uh, I believe. Um, KGSL uh, has been awarded grant funds for the project uh, also from the uh, Healthcare District uh, and has uh, applied uh, for the microgrant pro uh, program. Um, so uh, the breakout of funding that they have is uh, $55,000, or that they're proposing, uh, they have $55,000 secured from the healthcare district, uh, proposing uh, $15,000 uh, through the microgrant program, um, and then an additional 30 uh, from other sources. So, including your packet this evening uh, is uh, uh, information and the uh, application uh, uh, as part of the proposal. Um, and the proposal is to update the existing facility to provide an indoor area for area youth to utilize as, as a batting cage. Improvements to the facility would include necessary demo, installation of an ADA restroom, um, purchase of equipment uh, for the batting cage. Um, as outlined in uh, their application, there are no indoor alternatives uh, up for something like this in Kingsburg. Um, the Girls Softball League has indicated a desire to renovate and utilize the facility to pro promote long-term wellness and combat environmental issues, uh, which might include uh, excessive heat or air quality issues or uh, a lack of daylight uh, uh, or colder temperatures in the wintertime. Uh, so just some background on the Mosquito Abatement District building. It was built in the 50s and it was originally sold to the city uh, to them for a dollar. Uh, however, the deed specified that if the building is no longer used by the, uh, uh, the abatement district, it would return uh, to the city's use. Uh, the uh, Mosquito Abatement District uh, built a new headquarters in Parlier uh, and as such uh, returned the space uh, to our use. Uh, we did perform a phase one environmental report um, to make sure that it was uh, safe to use uh, and there were no findings uh, as part of that report uh, outside of um, um, they did recommend that uh, we do a, a, an asbestos and a, a lead based paint survey uh, which was not done as part of the phase one. Um, and, uh, let's just let me go to the I'll go to the actual application itself. Um, so. Uh, scored. This is the this is the rubric. 
uh, just based upon um, scoring cri criteria as laid out in the guidelines. Um, um, let's see here. Yep. So this is the uh, this is the layout of the um, uh, this is the cost estimate. Excuse me. This is the the building here in the photo. Um, there's a cost associated with the um, uh, building itself, and then this is a layout of sort of an aerial view of how the space would be used. So they've got a practice area here, batting cage, restroom, and then sort of a office storage space as well. Uh, so this is, I think, a little bit dated. Just if you're looking at the figure, sorry, it just jumped out at me. What's the additional highlighted where it says Kingsburg City Council? Yeah, so I think uh, yeah, grant. I think that was that was from their original application, and they okay. were uh, intending, they were hoping to get uh, a higher number at uh, at that time, and okay. told them that the micro grant program is you know, capped at the fifteen thousand unless it receives a higher number, or higher percentage of, of points. So I think this was actually taken maybe from their healthcare district um, application as well. So, um, but it's. Okay. As far as the diagram is concerned, it's useful for, for our review. So I'm happy to answer any questions, but I also know that there's a representative here from the Girls Softball League that can answer questions about the application as well. As far as the asbestos lead paint survey, who would be covering that? Uh, I mean, we could, we could talk about that. Um, you know, uh, if the city was going to use it in a full-time use, uh, we, we would do it. I, I'm not sure what that survey would cost. I'd have to do some research in terms of that. But if the council wanted, you know, I, I would say that if, if you go forward with, with the application saving, and I forgot, sorry, I forgot to mention that it's in the staff report, is that we would exercise some sort of a lease agreement with uh, KGSL, similar to what we've done with KYBA. Um, and so, you know, potentially that the stipulation for, for those assessments could be written into that lease as well in terms of who's responsible for it. Okay. Any council questions before we ask um, Sherman to come up? Would you like to come up and talk to us about this? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Thank you for considering it. Um, yeah, the building uh, in its current state is somewhat of an eyesore, uh, and so the idea is to beautify it by and make it useful to the community. The Girls Softball League uh, specifically uh, has been moved around for a number of years. Used to have all their games at the high school, then they built some softball uh, and soccer, so they can you know, kind of gone back there now to do games, um, and then we. We're doing the games at Rayford Johnson, but they did an upgrade there, eliminated uh, some softball fields for uh, tennis courts. And then Athwell Park was a practice area, and you know certainly the improvements there are great. Um, but so there's become some limited space. What interested me about this building was the ability to, uh, you know, the softball season starts around February. It's dark, uh, so it's cold. And for our youngest players, that creates some issues and uh, knowing coaching two daughters through softball uh, when they're at that age they're usually asking to go to the bathroom sometime during practice and there's no bathrooms at Athwell Park no bathrooms uh, that are open most places so we like the idea of this facility being able to have the bathrooms there uh, for the younger kids and they don't need a large space most of what they need to do is kind of practice on fundamentals so uh, there'd be the indoor grass area and all that green area, and then a, a dedicated batting cage. Um, we think that some, uh, you know, if it was leased to us, we could raise some revenue by uh, maybe renting it out to some of, you know, individual players that want to use it or other groups that may want to come and use it to kind of offset the cost of operating it. But definitely it would be dedicated to Kingsburg softball. Uh, we also don't have a place to meet. We use the fire station sometimes, so this would have a, an office for us to meet. Um, so that, that was the idea behind it. We did get the grant for $55,000 from the healthcare district, so they saw uh, the benefit here. Um, and you know, we're looking to utilize this grant program to take something right now that we see is not a uh, 
you know, not a pride of the city and, and try to make it that way. So um, I guess on the asbestos piece, I would think that you're going to have to, for any use of that, at some point you'd have to do that test. So um, the, the budget here is tight. Uh, you know, we're not, we're a nonprofit. Um, so we're already looking to put $15,000 of the league's money into it. And then, you know, that's about what we can put together. And then we would go and uh, raise uh, the rest through the community. So. How many teams can you get in that spot, the practice area at a time? It would have to be, you know, it would probably just one, one team. one team at a time. But it has lights. So now you've taken where everybody has to. The other thing is convincing coaches, you know, to, uh, you know, when dads or moms are working, uh, you know, it makes it tough for them to get to practice before it's dark when they have to get out there at 4 o'clock. Sometimes it's hard to find uh, coaches. Sometimes we have people that are coaching their older daughter and their younger daughter and, uh, you know, doing double duty just because, they have availability, and we think it would open up the coaching potential for more people by having the light, and then they could schedule, uh, you know, later in the evening and you know, during that time. So, and, you know, it's not cold, and if it rains, so there's a lot of benefits that we see to having that. So, yeah. Any other council questions or discussion? I guess my only other question would be, um, once we get a, some sort of a contract written up, Alex, does that just come back to us again for approval or? Yeah, well, I mean, you're talking about like the lease with the. Yeah. With, yes, yes. Okay. You, you guys would have to approve that. So tonight is only the micro grant yeah. approval. Your, your and consideration then... this evening is just for the for the grant because if mm -hmm. we don't like the project, then we exactly. don't need to do a lease, right? So. Mm -hmm. I think Alex makes a good point too. Some of the numbers, you know, the, the engineer's estimate was done some time ago. So we may have faced a hard reality right off the bat here where if the costs are, are much higher than that, um, you know, I'm certainly not one for putting double the cost just because, uh, you know, things are inflated at this time. So we'll have to see where those costs come in. Um, I think to, but a lot of that we can't do until we secure some some funding to go out and and get those estimates so yeah. any other council questions no? how about do we have any from the public no nope. okay <laughs> then tonight before us um we will need to decide um if we want to approve this as presented or not and make a motion to approve it. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Our next items that we have are our council reports and staff communications. 7.1 Community Services Commission. Um, the discussion was focused on um, the bathrooms that will go at Athwal and looking at the design and narrowing it down um, to determine which one's there. So it's exciting. What is very exciting? What was the timeline on that? Um, I'm not sure what the what is the timeline on it. <clears throat> uh, so we got some input from the Community Services Commission. So now we just have to. We're working with. Um, one of the, the, the vendors that basically provides the prefabbed uh, restrooms, you know, and so um, we're working on getting quotes for that. So I would, you probably see it. Uh, I mean, just from a timing standpoint, uh, the vendors indicated that if you ordered it today, it's probably six months out from being delivered anyways, just from a, them having to, you know, put it together and then supply chain things. So it'll be part of your guys' budget conversation uh, as part of the uh, the next budget year. So, um, but I would anticipate that it would occur within the next fiscal year. Thank you. And then I will say just one other update since we're on community services, we did get the uh, the signed documents or contracts back to just today, just this afternoon from the state on the uh, dog park one. So we'll be able to start uh, ramping up those efforts as well. So we were we were waiting on those documents to come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 7.2 Public Safety Committee. Uh, we have not met. 
7.3, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we meet next week, but I know that there is the car show coming up, uh, not this weekend, but the following, and cruise night the night before. 7.4, Economic Development. We have not met. 7.5, Finance Committee. We did meet since the last meeting. I don't think there was really much to report to Mark. 7.6, Planning Commission. Um, we meet next Thursday. 7.7, 7, SKGSA. Uh, we have not met. We didn't report. 7.8, Downtown Business Improvement District. The Kingsburg Business Improvement. The Kingsburg Business Improvement District met this uh, past Monday, and um, they had discussions, of course, about their car show and, and their involvement with that. Uh, some more discussion about their website and, and photos, and still really just trying to hash out the details. It is a lot of work to start a new website. I have learned from this group because every meeting we are talking about photo photography and a website, but they are um, definitely coming. They've come a long way since the beginning. Also, a billboard discussion, which I thought was very interesting. So, our economic development consultant Jolene was there, and she presented that um, we can advertise, you know, our car show, our Swedish festival, and holiday events. Um, and she, she listed the, the amount and the, and the duration of the ads. So there was some conversation about, around that. Of course, the Business Improvement District is always working towards just getting people into Keensburg downtown and spending their money with us. So um, it was a good meeting, and that's all I have to report. Thank you. 7.9, Council of Governments. Um, they started the meeting off with a in memoriam for um, my dear friend David Cardness, the mayor of Fowler that passed away. And that was tough because his wife was there and so was the city manager. And to speak out on how much he's meant to all of us, but also um, we changed up all the different boards that he sat on that we were gonna have to fill his spot. And once we started filling those positions, you could see really the legacy that he's left behind and those are really big shoes to fill because we had a lot of different boards that he has served on throughout Fresno County. Um, as you know, I've been the vice chair of COG and um, FCRTA for the last few years under him and so the board did um, nominate me for the to be chair so I was unanimously approved to be the chair of COG and FCRTA and that is um, it's, it's great um, for the city of Kingsburg because now we've got that, the top leadership there. Um, but it's also bittersweet because that's not the way I'd want to become chair of COG um, behind David, but I learned so much from him and it's such a great mentor that hopefully I can fill those shoes as the new chair of COG and FCRTA. But again, this is really gonna be beneficial to Kingsburg and I'm excited to serve in that position. Um, a couple more things about with FCRTA. Um, so I've been working with Adam and Adam's been working with Daniel with, um, there's gonna be a new bus shelter that's going in over at the Senior Center. And um, so Moses um, also now has approved um, to pay for the installation of it as well. So now that won't cost us anything either. So I uh, worked with him on that. Um, and then um, he'll be down here tomorrow. Moses will be here tomorrow. Remember we've been talking about that microgrid system that we wanted, we're trying to find a place for that throughout the downtown area. So we're gonna do a walk tomorrow, walk around and take a look where, where it could fit in. So that way we stay on, Kingsburg gets it and not another city. So anyway, so that'll be tomorrow. A question, where is the bus shelter going at the senior center? It's good to go in right down, well, the, where the parking lot is, so where they can pull in. So it'll be down, um, so it'll be inside the parking lot of the senior center. Um, part of the reason I talked to him that not only is it this it will benefit the senior the senior center but obviously school across the street after school program it's in the downtown area plus we have the senior housing across the street so it's really a, a great spot because a lot of people do get picked up from the buses over there so and then that's why I told him well we need to get the installation you're gonna give us a free shelter we need the installation come on Moses <laughs> so yeah yeah so we got that too so that'll be coming in. Um, he has the shelter, and he's just coordinating. Adam and uh, Daniel are coordinating right now to get that picked up, and then he'll send his construction guys down here to put it in. Thank you. That's it. Oh, wait, um, Alex, sorry. You wanted to talk about the 
Yeah. TOG. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, so if, if council will recall, um, it's probably six months or so ago, we, uh, I mean, the grant was a couple of years ago, but we completed a study at transit, transit, transit oriented development. Uh, we got a grant through Fresno Cog to uh, study our down the downtown specifically related to parking and improvements, um, you know, pedestrian improvements, uh, bike, you know, more bicycle facilities, things like that. And so, uh, EDC, uh, the Economic Development Committee had uh, discussed it, uh, the bid had discussed it, uh, and then ultimately the council accepted that um, um, that downtown strategy that had some recommendations in it. So in this round uh, of TOD grant, uh, we submitted for a grant um, that would implement uh, sort of the first phase uh, of those improvements, and uh, we were told that we would be uh, receiving that, it would be fully funded. So. Um, I know that the, the policy advisory committee is going to vote on it uh, on this Friday, uh, and then uh, uh, the COG board uh, later this month uh, during their meeting. And so, if that gets funded, then um, I think it's just shy of about four hundred thousand dollar grant uh, that will get to um, uh, install some of those improvements. So, uh, assuming that all that goes through, uh, we'll bring that back just to give you an idea of, of what those first phase improvements are that, that came from that plan. But um, some pedestrian improvements and uh, bike lanes and things like that that we, that we talked about at that time. So, good news. Mm -hmm. It's be good for our general plan too to mm -hmm. have this as well. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot to mention that the new vice chair is Ro uh, Mayor Rolando Castro of Mendota. So he is vice chair. Mendota, huh? huh? Kingsburg was a west side and west east side, west side. And there's a different awesome. one of FCRTA, right? There's a different one for FCRTA. It was the same one? Okay. Uh, city selection. City, city selection. Is Ray, my vice chair. 7.10, um, council member reports. Do you have any? No? Any? Happy Autism Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. That's my report. <laughs> More like a shout out. Mm -hmm. Anything? No? 7.11, city manager's report. A few items. Uh, first one's on the screen right now. It's just an update. Uh, we put together uh, a survey uh, regarding the ARPA funds, uh, asked individuals to rank it, you know, basically uh, based upon what the council narrowed it to at our, at our last workshop. Uh, so they're uh, sorted in order there. Uh, basically, the higher the score, the, the more one or most preferred they receive. So you can see that. Uh, fibers at the top, um, and then uh, improving downtown infrastructure, uh, some of those which will come from that grant, which is nice. Uh, so we, might, we won't have to use uh, necessarily as much in terms of ARPA funds for that. Uh, the community planning efforts that we talked about, you know, general plan, uh, specific plan update, um, uh, funding for parks and recreation improvements, uh, and then uh, sort of on down the line. So um, we'll continue to, to gather some of those, and then we'll schedule uh, another workshop. Uh, just to kind of try and give updates and uh, possible uh, options for funding, at least at least in the in the in the coming year, as part of our uh, this next fiscal year budget. Um, so that's that. A um, couple other things uh, you probably have seen in the downtown. They've been uh, it looks like they're getting really close to finishing the banner uh, pole painting project, which I think has turned out really well. They look really good, uh, and they've been putting up the new banners too. So uh, we'll be should be pretty close to ready to go by, by the time car show rolls around. Um, they've also been painting some of the, uh, public works have been doing some of the uh, the smaller poles, like so right out here, um, City Hall and some of the other areas, because um, those needed some, those stuck up pretty well after uh, the other ones uh, received some TLC. And then we've had a few comments, but we've had a lot of activity. And so uh, Mike and I and Holly and Jolene have uh, really been trying to unwind uh, the ownership of the business park sign, the very large business park sign that is in the business park. So <clears throat> when the business park was originally developed uh, in uh, 2005, um, there was a, an owner's association, so kind of similar to the, you know, to the bid, for example, um, that they created that was supposed to pay fees and maintain the sign. And um, obviously, um, you know, because of the recession and just, you know, some of the other variables, uh, a lot of activity didn't occur in the business park for a number of years. And so that association went defunct. Um, and now that we've had uh, a fair amount of activity out there, we have a lot of people interested in going on that sign, uh, T-Mobile, Valley Health Team, Safe Food Alliance. And so um, the property has actually changed the property for which we there was a, an original easement that went to the business owners association has changed hands. So um, 
uh, we're, we're, we're trying to uh, sort of peel back all those layers on that so that potentially it can be reconveyed possibly to the city and then um, you know we can you know work with um, with each of them to uh, get them all on on that sign get the sign uh, running like it's supposed to again you'll see, you know it, it has lights but it's not lit up because no one's paying an, a utility bill right now so pg e doesn't have electricity to it or doesn't have it heated up so um, we're looking forward to getting that uh, resolved uh, hopefully sooner rather than later but um, in case you get questions about that that's kind of the, the where we're at with that sign so that's all I have Alex um, the signage that our way finding signage the one that's down uh, near Venice it looks like is a sprinkler hitting the picture of the coffee pot tower so uh, that's possible it's uh, there was I think there was some spray paint at one point so we had to clean it uh, and then sun damage. And so we're trying to get that replaced, okay. uh, that photo. So I've talked to Dave uh, again, but we're trying to address some of those issues so that hopefully, um, you know, we just don't have it That's sort right, of repeating. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a, it's a little – you can see it's kind of faded and cracking a little bit, which is just sort of a combination, I think, of the – because it's a photo. And mm -hmm. um, so – but okay. we are working on it. Yep. Bring that up. T-Mobile, Monday, we start training there, right? I think so. Um, I know. Uh, so, so they did. We did give them their uh, their, their temporary uh, uh, certificate of occupancy. There's a couple of uh, very minor things that are non life safety that they have to do to get their final uh, CO. But um, they got every. They've received everything from us and from the fire department um, um, to to move employees in there. And um, so they've been gracious enough and have been doing a lot of tours um, I know for their employees and allowed a couple of staff members to to go along as well but I know that they're they're working on planning their their ribbon cutting their their grand opening all those sorts of things too so um, um, but I do believe you're correct that they're from a going to be starting moving employees in for training purposes uh, next week um, and then they're going to you know ramp up um, all that training and I think that their intent is still to begin taking calls and actually operating uh, at the, as a call center in June. Yeah. Item eight, under future agendas, we have none listed. So we will move on to item number nine, which is to adjourn our regular Kingsburg City Council meeting.